Let's talk retro here. You know, grayscale kind of stuff, black and white photography. Open up in your exercise folder an image called Lakeside. Now this image was actually, oh, taken a long time ago. It was film and it was digitized. But I want to make it look uh, older. Or I just, for whatever reason, want to turn it into grayscale. I kind of grew up in a grayscale world. My dad built me a darkroom when I was pretty young, and I worked a lot in grayscale because color was just really, in terms of chemical processing, a very difficult thing. So I did a lot of black and white photography. So in this case, I want to maybe make it go a little bit retro and go into grayscale. A couple of things. The term black and white photography is the one we use, but in a sense, not that I want to be picky here, it's not really accurate. Black and white, well, let me show you something. Go to the word image on the pull down menu and go down to adjustments and select something like threshold. Now in threshold, I can make the image black and white. Kind of an interesting look, but that's black and white. If I come back out of here, because we don't want that, and go what I call kind of like the lazy way to do this, go into desaturate down here, that's grayscale. So the term black and white photography is the one we use but a more accurate way would say grayscale photography, I suppose. That's just being picky. Let me go ahead and press undo. I love the undo key. I wish life had one. Grayscale imagery is changing how we look at the channels of color. Now, if you go up to the word window, let me show you something. Go into histogram right here. And I'm going to click this little button right there, which is options. And I'm going to tell it to show me all the channels. Each one of those channels is a color. And each one of those colors, when mixed with another color, produces the color you see in the image. And each one of those little tiny pixels has a blend of these three colors. I mean, we know how to blend colors. If you take a blue ink and a yellow ink and mix them together, you get a green. So all the colors in this image are just basically being created by the mixing of those three. And you can see the mixture up here. We're going to get more into the histogram later but I just wanted to show you that. Now watch what happens to the histogram, because you can see it's different. We've got a bump going on here of blue, but there is no bump of blue there. So each one of these is a little bit different. If I take the image, again using the easy way out, and go into desaturate, keep your eye on the red, the green, and the blue channels, and watch what happens to them when we do this. They equalize. In additive color, if you take an equal amount of each one of the three primaries, red, green, and blue, and mix them together, you basically get a shade of gray based on how much of each one is mixed. So you've got like 10% red, 10% green, 10% blue. Those exact values will produce actually a shade of gray. So all the channels are basically all the same. Now if I press undo again to bring that back again, we get our color, and you can see they're now mixing and changing. So the whole process here is how do we get an image from color into shades of gray and do it correctly. The desaturate that I just showed you is a very easy way to do it, but it doesn't allow you to make any changes. You're telling the computer, you decide, based on your algorithms, what is the best way to convert this image into shades of gray. Now, I would rather control the process myself because I would say nine out of ten times when that happens, I really don't like what the computer did. So our goal in this chapter is not just to click a button and convert an image into a shade of gray. It's how we do it the right way for the images that we're working with. On to the next.